Hey everyone, welcome to this session by IntelliPath. Handling terabytes worth of data generated every hour is a task for any companies. And today's database technologies handles all of this very easily. And on this session, we're going to check out by comparing what SQL is and how it stands against this technology called as NoSQL. And before we begin with our session, make sure to subscribe to the IntelliPath's YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from us. Here's the agenda for this session. We'll begin by checking out what a database actually is. Followed by this, we can check out what is SQL and check out where it is used as well. And after this, we're going to check out a little bit about NoSQL and find out where it is used as well. And after this, we're going to do a head on comparison between SQL and NoSQL. And guys, if you have any queries, make sure to head on to the comment section and let us know and we'll be happy to help at the earliest. And if you guys are interested in end-to-end -end course certification, IntelliPath provides a lot of courses on the latest and the trending technologies. So make sure to head to the IntelliPath website to know more about the same. And without further ado, let's begin the session. So coming to the first point on the agenda, it is introduction to data. Well, what is data? Well, to put it in the most simple term for you guys, data can be considered as any facts which are basically related to objects in what we're talking about in consideration basically. So, you know, giving you different types of data, ages of data, for example, it's a numerical form of data. Age can be anywhere between, you know, point, uh, 0 0.10 all the way to 100 and much more. And then we have video data, which is basically an unstructured form of data. And then uh, we have images, uh, we have music and much, much more as well. But then when you think about the data that gets generated by social media, it is terabytes worth of data every single hour. Well, WhatsApp, you can send documents, messages, encrypted messages to be accurate twitter you can send tweets facebook you'll be uploading images and again instagram and much more as well right so what do you guys think about data what is the different type of data that you have come across which you feel was very difficult to handle head to the comment section and let me know and this brings us to understanding what a database actually is well guys again i'm going to keep this video very simple so the majority of the audience can understand all the concepts that i'm teaching here coming to what a database is well database is basically nothing but a very systematic collection of data where this collection of data is used in pretty much manipulation of the data which is stored addition removal of all the data managing the data in and out and this is done using a database because it can be accessed and worked around in a very easy way to give you live examples of databases look around you for example the old school telephone directory books which we used to get uh, which is also called as the yellow pages in a couple of countries that was a very good form of a database and these days even the contacts app on your mobile phone follows the same rule and then we have the power generation schemes where the entire world is consuming some amount of power and this power needs to be tracked so that the power generation companies know how much to generate right so they have an entirely detailed database and then this database is also used when you're being billed every single month for the electricity that you go on to using and then obviously we have social media social media as i said handle tons and tons of data every single day so why do you need a database well here are some of the reasons why we should actually be considering a database guys the first thing is it's managing extremely large amounts of data and as you already know a database makes this very easily and then accuracy of the data sure you can store thousands and thousands of libraries and thousands of thousands of lines of uh, data rows and columns of data in a spreadsheet so when you're working on the data, how accurate do you think the data is going to be? Because uh, if it's a manual task, if it's manual labor, you'll be putting in thousands and thousands of uh, data entry jobs and then all the data needs to be accurate. And if done manually, in my opinion, this would be a very messy, shabby and an unruly job. But then if you use a database, all of this makes sure that all the negatives of manual labor are pretty much taken away because databases ensure very good accuracy. Here's more reasons. The ease of data upload. And again, as I've been telling you, manually uploading a data into, a, let's say, a spreadsheet might be very tough. But then uh, uploading a data to a database, let it be any form of data, unstructured data, semi-structured data, fully structured data, for example, again, it's very easy to do that as well. And I think the most important thing we should all be concerned about is data security. When you're moving your data in and out of databases, you can also make sure that the data gets encrypted and that no person can access the data unless authorized to do so. 
So your data security is one of the very good reasons as well. And this quickly brings us to the introduction to SQL. Just a quick info guys, in case you guys are interested in picking up courses, IntelliPath provides end-to-end -end course certifications on the latest and the trending topics. Make sure to head to the IntelliPath website to know more. And on that note, let's get back to the session. What is SQL? Well, SQL is the simple standard language which is used for dealing with something called as relational databases and uh, SQL is the language which can be used to create, read, update and delete all the records, all the details, all the singular units present on the database. So what does SQL stand for? Well, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. So what is a relational database then? Guys, a relational database is nothing but a very simple type of database that is used to store and provide access to the data points but then it is related in a way so the data is interlinked to each other and this is what gives it the name relational databases so coming to what sql is pronounced as sql is actually pronounced as either sql itself or sql as well and then a little bit more about relational databases again relational databases are based off a model what we call as a relational model and in the relational model it is in a very intuitive way where you can you know draw out your model and then put out relations in between your data with respect to that it is a very straightforward way of representing a data actually and then with respect to relational databases all the data is stored in the form of tables and then uh, how do we differentiate the data in these tables well we have something called as keys here and all these keys actually give a unique identifier to each entry in a particular table as well. So the columns of these tables, right? So all the rows holds the data and all the columns pretty much basically, you know, hold all the attributes of the data. And pretty much each record always has a value uh, which is associated with the particular attribute. And what this does basically at the end of the day, it makes it very easy to establish some very good relationships among the data since we are directly dealing with relational databases. And what are the flavors of SQL available? Well, again, SQL majorly is very simple and pretty much very similar in syntax when you consider all the flavors as well. There are certain proprietary changes, for example, which Microsoft SQL might put out or MySQL uh, might consider or even at the people at Oracle as well. And then pretty much uh, it is a very simple tool to learn. It is widely used throughout the world as well. Again, running through the examples, MySQL, Oracle database, we have Microsoft SQL Server, Sybase, and much, much more. And this quickly brings us to the introduction to NoSQL. So we know what SQL is, but what is NoSQL? Again, it's called as NoSQL or NoSQL as well. It is pretty much a non-relational database management system. That is what DMS means. And then what this does is it does not require the fixed relationships what we have when we talk about re our relational databases. So basically, uh, again, there are some feature called as joins in SQL, where in terms of NoSQL, we are avoiding all these concepts. And by avoiding all of these, the biggest advantage of a NoSQL database it is that it makes it extremely easy to scale from one machine to thousands of machines where all the data needs to be moved around, worked with and processed at the same time. So the biggest advantage, again, after easy to scalability is is that no sql databases are known for their huge data storage requirement handling capabilities with respect to various distributed data sources and at this time you might be wondering is it no sql or how is it right so you're seeing on your screen that it says not only sql or not sql well, a majority, in fact, 99% of the people who work with uh, NoSQL pretty much call it as NoSQL, in my opinion. But then the actual what it stands for is not only SQL or not SQL. And this person called Carl Strauss pretty much introduced the world of uh, NoSQL to us in the year 1998. So it is a quite fairly old concept. So coming to a little bit more about NoSQL. Well, NoSQL consists of a wide variety of database technologies. Pretty much this is done to ensure that you can store any type of data that you can think of in a very simple way. And then uh, what this wide variety of data consists of, as I said before, pretty much is structured data, semi-structured data, unstructured data, polymorphic data, and much, much more. Think of images, videos, or unstructured data in the form of a spreadsheet and much, much more, guys. So who all use uh, NoSQL? Again, I'm gonna be covering this at the end of the section as well, but for now, Pretty much you need to know Twitter, Facebook, Google and many, many other IT companies go about using 
no sql for the day to day activities and again coming to the flavors of no sql uh, here are some of the non relational database examples uh, we have amazon dynamo db we have mongo db we have apache hbase and cassandra and much much more here as well guys so this quickly brings us to the head on comparison between sql and no sql and the first point which i want to consider here is the definition so again we've already seen the introduction so let me quickly walk you through the same again sql databases as i've told you are called as rdbmss or relational databases uh, the ms stands for management systems and then no sql databases they are called as the non relational database management systems or for example even distributed database systems as well so this brings us to the next point which is development again sql was actually developed in the 1970s and this is a 50 year old technology uh, to be honest with you guys and this basically came into picture uh, when there were some struggles to store a uh, flat file storage methodologies and then this actually overcame all of that at that particular time and then coming to no sql no sql was actually developed in the late 2000s on a very large scale and this actually uh, was uh, put out to make sure it can overcome all the limitations all the downsides of the sql databases just a quick info guys in case you guys are interested in picking up courses intellipath provides end to end course certifications on the latest and the trending topics make sure to head to the intellipath website to know more and on that note let's get back to the session and coming to the third point it's the query languages again sql already stands for structured query language and this is the standard language when we talk about sql but then when it comes to no sql are there any languages well to be fair with you no because no sql databases have no declarative query language as such which can be used to work with and this brings us to the next point which is the database type uh, again as we already told you sql databases are full of tables again sql databases are table based databases and hence there are a lot of tables there tables form the backbone of this particular entity and every uh, item on the table and every item which pretty much corresponds to this table forms a very vital part of that database but then when you come to no sql no sql databases uh, pretty much include everything from graphs it can be document based there are some key value paired databases and much much more and coming to the next one is scalability you have to know this that sql uh, databases are all vertically scalable and can be stacked on one top of the other where you can pretty much i think and this is one of the reasons why the sql logo looks the way it does and when you come to no sql database they're meant to be horizontally scalable next to each other at the same time and this brings us to number 6 which is the ideal use case scenario SQL databases are extremely well suited when it comes to having very complex queries and a very good query intensive work environments at the same time as well. No SQL is a little bit backward when it comes to complex queries because no SQL databases are actually considered where you do not have a requirement for all of these complex queries at the same time. And this brings us to number 7 which is the ability to be open source. Again, not all uh, SQL databases are open source but then 90% of them are but there are commercial versions such as uh, Oracle DB where some of the features actually come at a premium and then coming to no sql well most of these no sql databases have been open source ever since their launches respectively and then this brings us to the next point quickly which is the hardware requirement you have to know that sql sometimes require very specialized hardware for example we have oracle exa data and there are much more in fact so coming to the no sql part of it no sql databases work with full functionality on full screen even on the particular common place hardware where it does not require any fancy components to work and then the principle each model follows is also a little bit different SQL follows the acid model while no SQL follows the base model acid basically means atomicity consistency isolation and durability so all these are certain principles and rules laid out when you're working with an SQL database but then coming to no SQL we have something called as the base model so this base model actually means uh, basically available soft state and eventually consistent again these are some of the principles and the rules which govern a no SQL database and coming to the developer salary the average salary of an sql developer is somewhere around 90000 uh, usd per year and the average salary of a no sql developer is somewhere around 80000 united states dollars per year as well 
So this brings us to the next point, which is when should we use SQL and when should we use no SQL? Well, SQL is actually preferred where there is a communication requirement with an RDBMS system because it's a relational database management system and SQL is the preferred language for an RDBMS. And then pretty much it is used when you have to analyze behavioral related tasks and then pretty much you have to give any customized sessions for your clients as well. You should also know that SQL is preferred when you're actually building custom dashboards, when you're building custom reports and much, much more. So the main advantage of SQL is that when there is a requirement to, let's say you have to store the data and get the data at the earliest in a very rapid manner, SQL is the go-to language to go. So this brings us to the last point, which pretty much says that SQL is the go-to language when you're making use of RDBMS concepts such as joins where you'll be joining two tables and picking out a value from the same. You're using concepts such as views and much, much more. So when you're executing these complex queries, SQL is the preferred language. So when should you use NoSQL? Well, NoSQL are actually used when your particular data does not require the asset properties to work with. And if that's the case, then pretty much you can use the base properties to work with at the same time. And then here is where we use the non-relational database model because there are flaws with the RDBMS model, which is just not cutting it. As you might remember, NoSQL came into the picture so that it can fill in all the limitations provided by SQL. Well, NoSQL again uh, gives you very good advantages because it pretty much is used when there is any requirement of a very flexible schema. It does not need very hard or very harsh one-on-one -on -one relationships, one-on-two -on relationships, and much, much more when it comes to data. Because again, we might be talking about thousands of rows, thousands of columns, in fact, millions as well when we talk about big amount of data. And again, uh, what basically the advantage of NoSQL is that it does not have any particular dependencies and it can be used on, uh, you know, if you have any constraints, any uh, validation logic which you think are actually not required in that particular database. And this is the way to go if that's the case. And then the most important point is that NoSQL is pretty much used because you you'll be logging data from a variety of sources, basically a distributed source. And NoSQL does this in a very easy and an efficient way. And then coming to all the companies which make use of SQL and NoSQL, here are some of the companies that make use of SQL. Uh, we have Stack Overflow, Entity Data, Microsoft, Cognizant, Accenture, Dell, and in fact, thousands of other companies at the same time. So companies using NoSQL are Oracle, Adobe, JP Morgan, SAP, Qualcomm, GE, Amazon, Capgemini, NetApp, and here as well. Since this is a fairly new concept, this is the product of the 21st century, a lot of companies are actually jumping on NoSQL because they have found out the limitations of what SQL offers. And this brings us to the end of the comparison. Just a quick info guys, in case you guys are interested in picking up courses, Intel ePath provides end-to-end -end course certifications on the latest and the trending topics. Make sure to head to the IntelliPath website to know more. Hope this session was very informative for you all. If there are any more points that you think should be added and if you have any more queries, head to the comment section and do let us know there. And on that note, have a nice day.